In this video, we're going to walk through the reusable element in Bubble and its common use cases. This will help make sure that you create consistent, scalable designs in your app. Stick around until the end, because I want to make sure you avoid building anything that's redundant in your application, which can lead to errors and even extra work for yourself. It's Gabby over at Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. Let's talk about the reusable element in Bubble. This is a type of global element that you build and design once and then apply instances of that element to multiple places in your app. This is really going to benefit those who are building a multi-page application. So if you have any kind of a design, for example, a header with a menu system in it that needs to look the exact same and behave the exact same in many different places in your app, this is the type of element you want to work with so that you're not creating extra work for yourself and redesigning the exact same things multiple times. Of course, you can work with reusable elements on a single page design, but most of the common use cases are within multi-page structures. Let's take a look at a few examples now. All right, so now I'm in the Coaching No Code Apps editor. We, of course, have built this website on Bubble. This is our main site, and we use reusable elements everywhere. The first most common couple of use cases are headers and footers. So this is our index page, our home page, and you can see that our header here with our logo and uh, a few menu items is sitting inside of a reusable element, right? So we have the main content on this page, but we also have this element here, which is one common design that we can apply to multiple pages in the application. Okay, so this is our index. Uh, here is the preview for it. We can see it at the top there. I'm gonna switch over to another page. This is a description page here for our built to scale product. You can see the exact same header is designed up there. Now we didn't design that twice. We didn't build that out twice. We simply added an instance of that reusable element to this page as well. Here's another page on our website that describes uh, all of our resources and help that you can get from us. So this also has the header. Um, it's again, another instance of that reusable element. We didn't have to design it a third time. In fact, we have many other pages that also display this. Uh, likewise, we have a footer that is designed in a reusable element. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom here. That's this section here with the black background with all of these other links, our socials, right? If I go back to my index page, scroll down here as well, we can see that footer down there it is uh, again. Okay, so these are really common use cases for adding the exact same design to multiple places in your app. That way, you don't have to double up on that work. If you, need, if you need to make a change to something, let's say I wanted to swap out a link or change the colors, I only need to do it in the reusable element uh, design area and the editor for that element. I don't have to go to every individual page. I change it once and it's going to reflect automatically in all of those instances. I'll show you what this looks like in the editor here. So for the header, as an example, I can go into edit here. And this is where I can manage the design and any workflows that are attached to this. Um, all appearance properties happens in here, just like I'm editing a regular element on a page. Okay, so headers and footers really common for reusable elements. Another common example is a form. So we have uh, a couple of instances of this opt-in form throughout our website to have people sign up for our free training to join our newsletter, right? And so we have different points of entry throughout our website. And so rather than designing this form multiple times, right? There are of course workflows attached to this um, to collect that information and be able to add that person to our newsletter. Uh, you know, we're going to set it up once in this reusable element. That way it is scalable. It's consistent. We're not making mistakes if we have to have it on 10 different places. We make one change in one area. We don't need to remember to go and change it in nine other places as well. So forms that appear in multiple places are a really good use case. You might do this with a contact form, a feedback form for your app. Uh, as an example there, right? So here are a couple of pages where we see that form. This is again, our index page. We've got this at the bottom of the screen. There's one instance of it. Um, here is that resources page again. And at the bottom of the screen, we have that there again. We could have also created one big reusable element that combined both of these things if we knew that every single time we wanted to see the footer, we also wanted to see the form above it. That could have just been one. But in our case, we actually have other pages that only show the form maybe in the middle of the page or even at the top of the page or even in a pop-up. 
lots of ways that you can manipulate these elements. So that's why we kept it separate. And that's just different strategy that you can take with your designs. Now, the next example we have here is a little bit more advanced. This is kind of a pro tip, which is to use reusable elements inside of repeating groups. This is a great example of when you would want to do this. So take a look at this list of events that I have here. This is just designed inside of a repeating group. Now, if I wanted to take an action on any one of these events, uh, I can open up this kind of secondary menu here uh, of buttons, right? And we can see that it's passing that information. This is the date of the event. It's passing it into the group. If I go into this February 23rd event, it passes it there. So it's dynamic, right? And so this is in the use case of maybe you have a list of actions uh, through buttons or extra information that you don't always want to show uh, at all times directly in the cell. So you kind of hide it inside of this secondary window. Now this group here is a group focus. And if you've worked with repeating groups before, you might've discovered that you can't actually add a group focus directly inside of the cell. It's not possible. But the way around that is to go through a reusable element, okay? So if I go into the editor to show you here, this is my repeating group. I have my event uh, date there. And this icon is actually a part of a reusable element design. So you can create these elements for very specific functions, not just menus and forms and static footers and things like that, but for very specific functions because you can pass data to the reusable element. You can actually get data out of the reusable element as well, right? There's no limitations here. Uh, so we can see that we're passing the event, right, the cells event into that reusable element. And if we open up the reusable element, it's actually just, you know, the size of the icon there. This is now, you know, kind of acting as a page of its own, right? And so from here, I absolutely can add a group focus. So when I click on that icon, it shows this here, and then I can reference the events data, and I'm off to the races, right? I can take any action on that event. We can, of course, work with workflows here, just like any other element or just like any other page design. So this is something that is not very well known, but is a powerful workaround to get this more custom interactivity with uh, repeating groups is leveraging a reusable element in this way. There are, of course, many niche use cases when working with reusable elements in your Bubble app. You can work with these on single page designs. You can trigger workflows in custom ways, pass data in and out of them in many different ways as well. So if you're looking for more in-depth help when building your no-code app, head over to coachingnocodeapps.com slash resources to take the full deep dive. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.